So how do I get more sales at a farmer's market? So if you are looking to start a home-based business or local food business, and you wanna sell through the avenue of farmer's markets, they can be extremely profitable and make you quite a bit of money if you know how to do it. But I'm gonna show you six ways that you can actually implement very simple and very quick and easy ways that you can implement these ideas to make more money at farmer's markets when you sell your food. We're gonna dive into those six right now. All right, so welcome back to Marketing Food Online. In this video, I'm gonna run down six ways to increase your revenue and make it more profitable for you to sell at farmer's markets. I'm gonna go from six all the way down to number one, number one being the most uh, important aspect that you should implement in your farmer's market business. But before we do all this, definitely hit the subscribe button and the like bell and bell notification to check out all of our brand new videos we upload every single week. Now stay through this entire video because at the end of the video, I'm actually gonna give you two additional resources specifically for farmer's markets. There's gonna be two additional videos I'm gonna show you at the end of this you need to check out that will help you also increase your revenue as well. So let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. So number six, this is one that is a little tricky but is a huge benefit when you begin to sell at farmer's markets, more specifically selling food products. Now, the reason why I say it's a little tricky is you gotta make sure that your cottage food law allows this to actually work and allows you to do this. Because believe it or not, some states uh, don't allow you to do this one in particular, but number six is sample. Now, a lot of people may underestimate the idea of samples or may not even think about it, but when you start to sample a product, if you've got a dry rub, a spice blend, or barbecue sauce, a marinade, cookies, baked goods, whatever it may be, if you can give customers a small sample, a small portion of that product, you'll have much more success and likelihood of selling it if someone can actually taste it before they buy it than you would if you actually didn't. But the trick, as I mentioned before, is that some cottage food laws actually don't and they prohibit samples. So you don't want to go to a farmer's market, of course, and get caught doing that. But offering samples are a great way for the customer to try it kind of before they buy it. Okay, but one thing you want to keep in mind is you don't want to make your samples too, too big because remember that all of the items that you're making is costing you money to make. So if you're offering, let's say if you're selling cakes, an entire cake, you don't want to give someone an entire slice of cake because you'll be going through your cakes very fast. You want to make it a small amount, but let them try it. You can do it in small cups. You can do it in small paper wraps. You can do it in any way that you feel free to do it, but you want to make it small enough so you're not going to give away more than you're actually going to sell but a lot of people underestimate the power of samples when it comes to food products. Number five, a lot of farmers market vendors don't take debit or credit cards. They want to get cash in hand for every transaction. Well, that can be a problem because today, many people use credit and or debit cards. You need to have this form of payment available for every customer that comes to your booth or comes to your farmer market stand. Debit cards are fast. Yes, I know what you're probably thinking. Well, Damien, but they charge a fee for that. Here's the thing. If you can appeal to an extra 100 customers in a day using a debit or credit card instead of cash, guess what? You sold an extra 100 additional customers your product. And if they come back next weekend and the weekend after that because they loved it so much and they love the convenience of having a credit or debit card, that is gonna be more of a benefit for you, even if you have to pay a little bit of a fee to have that transaction. Don't sweat the fee. I mean, if it's like 30 cents, normally it's around 30 to 45 cents for a transaction with a debit or credit card. Actually, if you're paying more than that, you need to probably find a different processor. But here's the thing, if you're selling something for $5.99 and it costs you 35 cents to make the transaction, you know what? Go to $6.50. Go up and let the customer uh, absorb that payment for you as opposed to you absorbing it. It's not a big deal. It's really not a lot of extra money, but it is a big deal when you offer these additional forms of payment. So number four, this one is a little bit hard to understand at first. If you're new to the farmer's market realm and you're kind of just testing it out and you're not very sure, but limit your options to what you offer. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Well, Damien, I've gone to farmer's markets and I see, let's say produce stands and they have a variety of pro that's different. If you're selling produce and you've got a farm and you're growing a lot of different things, that's one thing. If you're making a certain food product and you have 10 or 12 flavors, I honestly would not bring 10 or 12 flavors to a farmer's market. The more things that people have, you wanna minimize 
your options because customers have a tendency to get overwhelmed a little bit when you have dozens and dozens of let's say cookies or dozens and dozens of different varieties of trail mixes or granolas or whatever it is that you're making if you're making seasoned nuts and you've got 20 of them on the table it's a bit much sometimes so if you minimize the options the amount of things that people can choose from there's a more likelihood that you're going to turn over more product and get more sales because people won't feel so overwhelmed this is something that a lot of newbies and people who start off at farmers markets don't understand and they flood their table they flood their booth with all kinds of stuff and it's a bit much so take it down a notch a little bit. Don't allow yourself to put everything out on the table. You know, if you've got 12 varieties of something and you have a weekend coming up at the farmer's market, why don't you bring five or six? And then the weekend following that, tell your customers who were there, say, hey, next weekend I've got six more flavors of my product. I've got six more variations of this. Do you wanna come back next weekend? What that does is it brings back the customer again and again. If you open up everything on the table, and they see what's there and they're supposed to they come every other weekend to that same farmer's market you kind of killed a little bit of surprise you kind of eliminated some of that surprise element right so you don't want to overwhelm them minimize your options next up you need to keep your booth and table organized at all times i can attest i have been you want to make sure you're always organized this is says a lot about multiple things number one there's a lot about you as a seller at the farmer's market when it's a, in disarray or people are picking through stuff and it's not organized. It's not kept neat and clean for the next customer to come over and buy it. Take pride in your booth. It shows and it reflects on how you run your business and the type of food products that you have. Plus, here's the thing. A lot of customers will interpret the quality of the food based upon how organized your booth is. And a lot of people get turned away. I've actually been to numerous farmer's markets numerous flea markets and tons and tons of local events where people are selling products. I've seen some booths that were never kept organized and it looks kind of gross actually. But if you're selling a food product, it's extra ultra important that you maintain the neatness of your booth and you will sell way more product when it's organized. If you've got a group of people, they come through your booth, they buy a bunch of products because you're kind of picking through things. Then after they leave, go back to the front of your table, go to your booth, walk around it and make sure you clean it back up and keep it organized. Because first impressions for me, if I were to walk around the corner and see disarray and you're selling baked goods and food items, I'm gonna be eating that or giving that to my kids. I'm not gonna wanna buy that. So the neater it is, the more money you will make. Remember, I'm definitely giving you quickly, quick and easy ways to implement your uh, more sales concept. And these are ways that will definitely bring in more business. So let's get to number two. Pricing. Now, this is something that a lot of people will overprice products. And unfortunately, a lot of the products just sit there on your table and you don't sell it. You want to price your product to sell. Okay. Price to sell. Here's what I mean by that. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, Damien, yeah, I have to mark it up a certain amount. I've got to make X amount of money, X amount. Yes, you do. But if you're at a farmer's market and there is a variation of what you're selling or there's multiple booths that have very similar products to yours and their price points are a little bit less or even a lot less, I'll guarantee you that you probably won't sell your product. You want to make sure that you always go by what's known as the 2.0 or two and a half time markup. If you go and exceed that and you're going into, if a thing costs you $2 to make and you're selling it for 12 or 15, that's going to be something that's going to sit on your table forever. Do a little bit of, of, of digging around and finding out what exactly are the price points in that farmer's market or even the area for products similar to what you're selling. Because you may have an idea in your mind for a certain price point, but in real, reality and realistically, it may not sell because of that. Always take a look at what's around. Don't outprice yourself so you don't sell anything. It's a little tricky sometimes when you do that, but remember the things that are most uh, important when factoring the price is packaging, labeling and ingredients okay also a lot of people tell you labor at first and all that but to be honest with you when you're a small business and you're at home don't factor in so much the labor at first because you're probably the only one that's making the product and it's not too too important just yet if you start to scale your business and you begin to make a lot more money and you're hiring people and now it's costing you labor it's costing you money that's different make sure you price it to sell lastly number one when you want to make more money at a farmer's market, I will guarantee you the booth that sticks out the most has an eye-catching, amazing, colorful, eye-grabbing signage, table, 
tent. There are companies out there who can create custom tents, believe it or not, custom tables, table wraps, table cloths, and banners and signage. You need to stand out. And then the number one thing to make more money is having signage that's going to get people's attention. If you're just another booth with a table and a white cloth, boring. You need to stand out. You need to, obviously you can't probably use a, a loud voice uh, uh, amplifying machine or something and yell, yell and scream at people, hey, come check out my booth. A lot of people, you can't do that. So you have to do it visually. So you need to do that through signage. You need to do that through your tent. There's a lot of canopies and tents that can be customized with certain colors on the front and have the name of the brand of your company. You have a company and you have a name. If it's Damien's Chocolate Chip Cookies, that needs to be in some huge, bright, colorful letters because it's going to grab people's attention, especially on a bright, sunny day. The last thing that you want to do is just have a boring white tent with a white tablecloth and some cookies and a little sign on the table. I'm not going to do it. Make sure that your signage is what's calling people to your booth. And if you don't have that, well, look into it because it's only about, you can even get some of the signage for anywhere from less than a hundred to a couple hundred dollars. But it's going to be an investment that's going to make you a lot more sales, a lot more money when it comes to your specific booth at the farmer's market. So how do I get more sales at farmer's market? These six ways are definitely ways that are very simple and easy and quickly to implement. And they should be bringing you much more money in sales and revenue. Now, check out these two videos here. I'll pop up a couple here on the side. Definitely check out these resources as well for farmer's market if you're looking to add additional resources to your plate and learn a little bit more about how you can make it successful and profitable. These are going to help you out big time. If you have questions or comments, let us know down below and I'll see you guys on our next video.